Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all have had a great week. Uh, and want to talk to you all today about some of the great information that's come out of the Electronium camp. And that is, the, as probably of you, many all well know now, David Bull, the executive director, former executive director of UNICEF, has come on as part of the Electronium team. Uh, this is very important in dealing with um, a lot of the charitable organizations, the NGOs that they're now working with. Um, and UNICEF, when, when, it, when you think about um, uh, international charitable organizations on a global scale, um, UNICEF is, is one of the biggest, it's probably one of the first organizations come to mind. So what I find so very interesting about a, a lot of this is, um, you know, it's been these days and it's, it's kind of been early in the history of Electronium where people talk a lot about some um, company that Electronium kept that uh, wasn't a very good idea and, um, you know, have all, almost tried to kind of suggest this very scammy like um, cabal of, of people involved with Electronium. But after really just looking at the data even even though I wasn't really reviewing a lot of Electronium um, in the very early days, I came on well after the um, ICO period. But even going back to that point now and taking a look at the history of Electronium, uh, the people that Electronium has aligned itself with, people like Chris Gorman, who's um, basically been knighted by the Queen of England, um, now the um, executive director of UNICEF, uh, you know, these are, are, are big names. And, um, you know, in cryptocurrency, I don't see a lot of projects that uh, make these type of very important uh, connections, both business wise and uh, globally. Uh, you know, and I, I think, uh, you know, obviously a lot of uh, projects are just pr these pretty much all automated situations, right? They're all automated, but... I think what has to be considered is because of the level of automation that exists in cryptocurrency, it is making it harder for cryptocurrency to expand, to market itself to the world. Right. Um, and so uh, there has to be someone incentivized to do that. So that stops many, but for the ones that do, I think if we just kind of reflect back on the early days of Electronum, the research I've been able to uh, very little that I've been able to do, but um, a lot of information has come about, about, you know, Electronium going into gaming and I, you know, I guess it was kind of, uh, they wanted to go this engine route and, and a variety of things. And I, and I just want to respond to that and the connection of, you know, all these great people, um, teaming up with Electronium, not to mention, uh, Richard Ailes himself, who was quite successful with, I believe a site called site builder that I think I might've even used when I was very young. So, <laughs> Um, you know, this is all very important because um, it just doesn't fit the narrative of what some people have tried to throw at Electronium in that way. And I'd also just like to say that, yeah, it is true that some businesses do veer off their original course, but we have to understand, too, that is also a part of a business growth, right, um, that sometimes you do have to be adopt uh, uh adaptable right uh and you have to be um uh, able to improvise sometimes and, and and admit you're wrong and go in a, a different direction right that's a better direction for your, your entire business and from 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 my perspective that's what it seems like what happened with electronium so a lot of people kind of put electronium under the bus after that period and um you know the price has been uh, not doing us uh, as good as it should have should be doing uh, many of us feel but here's uh, here's another very interesting um uh, thing i came across today uh, i'm going to actually segue into that um in the next part of the video we're going to talk about um the hex coin prediction price and, and some things but um richard hart who's the founder of this project that's coming out he was speaking about um you know how there are all these great projects that um, don't uh, basically it, it was he was putting it in a, in a frame of 
you can basically have uh, uh, good projects that price wise don't perform as well as projects don't that aren't as good. Right. So, um, you know, as to say that uh, price and a good product can be totally independent of each other. And especially in the cryptocurrency space and especially in, in, in the beginning, but we can kind of play out these scenarios as well. And one issue is what happens um, when you have a situation like that where you can possibly have great performance in the price. Why is that? Well, it could be people pumping up the price. It could be the creators of the projects pumping up the price. They could be incentivized to do that. Uh, it could be a project that's gained so many users that they're kind of just fixed on the point now of just pumping up the price uh, because they have their uh, their their value in, in that project, right? And so some of this is natural. But the problem is, if you think about what can what can happen in the redundancy of all of this, right? Where you just have uh, an entire market of people that uh, just act in a speculative nature, um, and um, you know, basically, uh, that's what's happened in cryptocurrency. Everybody's basically trying to treat every cryptocurrency as a store of value. Everybody just wants it to go up. Everybody just wants to hold it, right? Um, they're not using it. They're not utilizing it for anything. There are a few projects that are, um, but even reflecting back on what Richard Hart said, um, that might be the case, but they aren't, uh, they're good projects, but they aren't performing in price because of that dynamic of people wanting their value to go up to the point it just becomes this, this uh, speculation game. Uh, but ultimately the problem with that is even if you look at something like gold, right? Because uh, the idea in cryptocurrency is, uh, or, or what is the data seems to, to suggest, is that we are looking at cryptocurrency as gold, as an asset. We're treating it that way. We just want to hold it. We just want the price to go up. But think about what would happen in a situation if gold did that. If you had gold do something like that, um, you would basically have uh, a situation where gold could just get pumped up and then somebody could just go, well, you know what? I prefer to wear gold as uh, jewelry, adorn myself in jewelry. Uh, I prefer, prefer to use gold in some religious ceremony or costume party. I prefer to use gold in machines and cars and computers and semiconductors and space shuttle, right? And so gold could then just <laughs> go from being a store of value that's just going up in value to just being a, a product that uh, we can actually use. But can cryptocurrencies do that? And the answer is no. And that's why use is so very important. That's why uh, we shouldn't bet on price, but we should actually bet on people using these products because what's more likely to happen? that a usable product is always going to be usable to some degree. And uh, as long as it has that use case or something that we just speculate on. Right. And I think if we're honest about it and we take a step back and we take a real good look, we will find that it has to be over 90 percent of the cryptocurrencies. Most of us are probably using now watching this video. Is not being used for anything? Bitcoin is being used to buy altcoins that aren't used for anything. It's just speculation after speculation. And this just cannot ultimately work in the end. Like it, it is no reason to put trillions of dollars into ideas like this. We have to find uh, really useful uh, ways to use cryptocurrency. Now, some people say it, um, store of value is the is the the best we could hope for, and let's just do that. But then you're trying you're 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 kind of playing this game of okay, well we could kind of do that, but we're not really using this stuff for anything. Um, we're just kind of doing this thing, and we don't really know which one of these cryptocurrency projects can act better because the idea of what most of us are looking to receive. Uh, at the um, at the end of this, I think that's what I'm going for.
What do we get to at the end of this? What is the end result of this? What are we doing with the stuff at the very end? And um, I, I think in the case of like Electronium, we can clearly see what the end is. It is this very useful currency money that is actually needed and used in places around the world because it's convenient, because it's on their on their phones. And so this is a kind of this perfect creation of this uh this uh, ecosystem along with this ergonomic uh, um, uh, uh, application to it, of course, talking now about the M1 smartphones, um, all kind of working together and uh, what makes just a lot of sense, right? It's just, uh, to, it's just undeniable what it does. But that's also another thing that we're finding out, I think, in cryptocurrency is that uh, it's almost like things that should work in cryptocurrency don't necessarily work now or it doesn't appear to work now. But I think in the future, all that will change about. Right. And uh, so Electronium is one of these projects that th thought about all these these issues. Right. They didn't just go launch it, build whatever and um, say, well, uh, we're going to wildcat on this and see what happens. No, they, they went and they collected data, right? Data that suggested this would be the best thing to do with a cryptocurrency. This would be of more use to people. And, um, you know, again, I wouldn't want to bet uh, store value against use. Uh, personally, I would not want to do that. Um, so let Trump doing great, moving in the right direction. I was uh, very glad to... Uh, see them making these connections, real connections at that, not just fake partnerships like some cryptocurrency projects do. Uh, these are actually, <laughs> uh, um, you know, things that Electronium gets done, that it's public, that we can see, the people we can see, um, uh, and uh, um, the company we can see, right? So, um, yeah, just, just, I think it's a great project, Electronium. You know, just want to bring it back to don't compare good pro uh, projects um, with price, but also keep in mind that these are all self-correcting things where use will always trump price because use will become the obvious need and the demand. Whereas a lot of times what we get in speculation in the casino is smoke and mirrors, right? And we see this all the time. So let's let's try to be very clear about what it is exactly we're seeing in cryptocurrency and uh, uh, and, and where it needs to go. But uh, anyway, now I want to move over to the Richard Hart's Hexcoin project. Um, very uh, interesting project that will be uh, actually going on December 3rd, um, but will do their snapshot on December 2nd, which is tomorrow. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit here. Okay, so we're here now on the Hexcoin site, and I haven't been excited about a project in a long time in cryptocurrency. You know, it's all been pretty much dull. Uh, pretty much uh, the market hasn't done anything like 2017. And now I kind of see this situation uh, where we could be possibly headed back to the uh, situation like 2017. But Unfortunately, not for every other coin, but potentially for hex coin. Uh, and I want to talk about why I found the project so interesting. And I'm going to try to do something that uh, I haven't done in a long time. And I only do it for projects I really get excited about. And I think they got some great potential. I think the last one I did was for like BitTube. Uh, I don't really like doing them for my own, you know, token for... Uh, but what we will do is we'll play around with some some ideas about where I think a project like our project should fit uh, in there uh, without, you know, boosting people's head up about what the price is going to be to try to get you guys to FOMO in. Um, because what we're doing, we're really trying to build a network here. Uh, we're, we're all about that use thing, too, because we think use is going to win out in the end if something is useful to people. But uh, let's talk about the, the, the Hex um, coin project. It's a very interesting project. So 
It was started by Richard Hard, and I, I got a lot of videos on it. So I'm, got, I'm uh, so you can uh, look through my video series, and it talks about um, Richard Hart in, in hex coin in detail. But what I'm going to focus more on uh, in this video is just where I think the price could be over the next few months, and that's going to be very difficult to do without uh, any data and just kind of going on basically what I've heard from Richard Hart. But I can kind of conceptualize uh, with this, uh, what a project like this might be at, uh, just based on the area uh, in cryptocurrency where it's at and, and just marketing overall um, and, and market caps within uh, various um, uh, businesses. So Hexcoin, what it, how it describes itself as the first certificate of deposit the first high interest blockchain certificate of deposit free for Bitcoin holders, right? So Hex is designed to increase in value faster than anything else in, in history. So this is, so, so just so we understand this correctly, this project is designed just to do that thing. It is designed to pump your asset to be that store of value. Now, what's interesting is Usually when people hear something like this, the first thing they go is they go, well, but what's the use case, right? What, what are we using it for? See, we're going back to that use thing because we know use is the most important thing. Now, in Richard Hart's philosophy, we have uh, we have not acted on use as being the most important thing, right? We have acted on pure speculation. Uh, we don't really use these cryptocurrencies and we can look at the data and the data pretty much tells us everything we need to know about who uses even the people within cryptocurrency uh don't really use uh, the cryptocurrencies in a way uh that we could uh pretty much qualify as i would say uh significant use right you know in other words people aren't getting up going hey i'm going to buy this with my cryptocurrency i'm going to go get my cup of coffee with my cryptocurrency i'm going to you know that, that if that's happening that's probably uh, just happening, um, you know, uh, out of the blue. It's it's not something that's probably going to be uh, widespread and regular, of course, because uh, cryptocurrency ad uh, 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 adoption hasn't happened. And so, uh, you know, that's all kind of combined together. But then the, uh, you know, the statement can also be made that the adoption hasn't happened because people do not find it useful, right? So it can come the circular thing. But anyway, um, the idea is this certificate of deposit. What do you get when you have a programmable money? The thing that makes sense next is programmable interest. Now, I think what's unique about Richard Hart's project, something we quite haven't seen done this way, is it kind of combines this idea of a Bitcoin fork with this uh certificate of deposit right this this uh this financial instrument now um of course uh cds as financial instruments are one of the most popular products that most financial institutions use and for cryptocurrency one of the most our most popular uh product is bitcoin right so um you know so you have this kind of combination of the two uh, he's, he's going to pull in all these Bitcoin users. Now, uh, trying to identify a price for this project to, to have an idea. So people have asked me, well, how exactly, how far do you think this will go? You're very excited about this. Well, um, it's, um, kind of complicated because you have this situation where, um, a lot of this product, especially at the beginning of it, it's going to depend a lot on Richard Hart and Richard Hart's branding. That is something that gets left out of cryptocurrency quite a bit when we build stuff. It's, we're, we're all on this decentralization idea. But as Richard Hart has is explained it as well, what happens is that uh, the nature of decentralization then means we're going to get less promotion, if any, you know, very little promotion. We're going to get a little bit of money spent on Bitcoin ads. We're going to get a little bit of money, um, you know, spent to promote cryptocurrency. It's decentralized. So uh, there isn't uh, the marketing. There isn't a referral programs. Right. And, um, you know, Richard Hart went into detail about 
uh, the biggest companies, uh, b successful projects in the world having referral programs, right? Having these, uh, this, these, these marketing, and and this is how they get so big, right? They they get so big, uh, based on on those things. Um, and uh, Bitcoin was able to do it because it was kind of unique, the first out the gate. Uh, it was the uh, first of its kind, right? And, and and that could lead a lot of people to, to to get involved with it. But now things have changed, right? Um, things have changed in that way, but we still see this kind of idea of uh, a Bitcoin forks, right? And, and his project isn't a fork, but the dynamics of how it operates kind of relates to a fork. So if you think of in relation to something like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Private, Super Bitcoin. You know, all of these projects have uh, had some presence in cryptocurrency, some more than any other compared to any other coin. There are more Bitcoin products in the top 10 using uh, Bitcoin uh, Code uh, than any other cryptocurrency uh, there is. So the data suggests that being tied to Bitcoin is a good idea. Now, I think this is where a lot of projects fail because they kind of look at like, oh, we're not Bitcoin. Uh, they kind of look at Bitcoin as uh, something that if you use it, you're kind of being scammy or something like that. But Bitcoin is not owned by any anyone. And uh, branding of products has been a long thing done in business. You know, that's why you see one company come out with something Every other company's doing it. Is that a smart idea? Yes, in a way it is, because what they're doing is now they're sharing in that market share. They don't want to get left behind. So they're making a good business decision based on that. So all these things have to be determined. And because it, we haven't done that, the cryptocurrency space hasn't grown, right? Because we're missing a lot of elements that go into building uh, massive brands and uh, products, right? And trying to get the demand for them. You know, who's going to be using these products and why and what for? And some of the stories we tell about cryptocurrency, they work very well in idea and thought. But when they're actually put put out into use, they don't work. Like, for instance, um, you know, a lot of people might think it's a great idea to have cryptocurrency as a money. And they kind of uh, print these uh, utopian like worlds where People are going around and they're doing exchanges with these cryptocurrencies. They're buying all this stuff with Bitcoin. You know, of course, we know Bitcoin is too slow to handle day to day transactions, a variety of things. But what happens on simple things like uh, when somebody wants to charge back, right? You can charge back with credit cards and other, you know, financial uh, uh, things, but you can't uh, uh, you can't charge back with cryptocurrency, right? So it, now it has some limits to. Uh, why people are going to want to use it in that way. So how do you get around it, right? But Richard Hart, you know, he brings all that out basically in, in a lot of uh, what he talks about in promoting Hexcoin. And so the reason this is all very important, I think, is because uh, because Richard Hart understands that he's going in this, he's taking this different uh, marketing approach to it. And um, looking at the data, shaping up these narratives that target, um, you know, things like uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, even ideas like BitConnect, as, as bad as BitConnect was, there is a reason why BitConnect still got the $2 billion. Now, uh, is Richard Hart's product like BitConnect? In some ways, only, but only in the good ways, right? And, and what do I mean by that? Well, the referral programs, Right. The marketing strategies, those all those things are very much uh, still important. But the uh, the issue and the problem was, of course, the criminal activity uh, behind BitConnect. Right. And so uh, that doesn't work at all. We see we, we see the outcome of that. Um, but the some of the elements that they use to get successful is uh, what a lot of companies and products use still today. Uh, and this is something that lacks in cryptocurrency. So, so based on the fact that I think Richard Hart is a master of, of understanding that and utilizing that, you know, not to mention his reach in cryptocurrency. And of course, Richard Hart knows everybody in cryptocurrency. He uh, basically um, uh, already has a great following and presence. 
and uh, a, a many uh, content influencers in cryptocurrency are already teaming up with Richard Hart. So basically what that means is that um, he's going to get all of their followers as well, right? Because they're going to come through, come through them, right? Kind of like how some of you are getting my message now. And they're incentivized to do that, right? They're, they're incentivized to do it. Now, uh, I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, telling you all about this, just, to, you know, get the incentive and have the links and all of that uh, done. You know, that's, that's great and everything, but that's not the real reason I'm doing it. I'm, I'm actually very much into models and economic models and, and seeing if they can work. And I really believe this is one of these situations that combines enough of the financial aspect of cryptocurrency, but at the same time puts into effect uh, many of the marketing strategies that I think are going to be needed in business strategies to really make cryptocurrency what we need to be. You know, this isn't a type of thing that kind of just evolves and fixes itself. You know, we've tried that over a decade now, and uh, the data is is not really on on our in our favor with cryptocurrency yet. Um, so many other products that uh, have uh, built up a lot better than uh, cryptocurrency projects. It's not that cryptocurrency projects can't get there. It's that I believe they're missing some very important fundamentals that come to build a network, right? Ideas like brand effect, the network effect. How do you get that? Now, this is another thing I think Richard Hart wins at because Richard Hart understands uh, or already has this network thing going, right? So he already has that part. He got that part down pat. Now he has the, the math and technology and the decentralization of these uh, contracts. Now, that combination is a very powerful one. And, and I think we can see some 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 great uh, positives uh, with the, the Hexcoin project in that way. So. Having having the, the Bitcoin forkish type thing happening there, which has made many projects, um, you know, already. Uh, billion dollar projects just from launch, right? Just from the fork in the the Bitcoin products, and and again, he's not going to do that because his product actually runs on Ethereum. But he's going to give all of these coins to Bitcoin holders free. Now, as I understand it, you get something like ten thousand hex per Bitcoin, right? So that means this 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 um this coin. Uh, is is something already in that relational value to Bitcoin? You're probably already looking at about seventy cents to a dollar, right? Um, now the market cap uh, of how this is going to work, where I think it can get to, um, based on those dynamics of the project, and these are very powerful dynamics. The network effect and, and pool Richard Hart already has from the beginning. Uh, to other big crypto um, uh, content influencers. Um, the fact that he's kind of zeroed in on the main use in cryptocurrency, which is speculation. <laughs> and, and that's just kind of the truth, right? Um, that it is that, and, and he's doing it in a way, in a, in a way we haven't seen done before. Um, and with his reputation, I think he could pull it off enough where he could be trusted enough for people to get in, right? And so, you could have uh, a type of uh, BitConnect influence how people are going to be out promoting this thing and dropping links. And every time somebody, uh, uh, you know, opens up their social media, they talk about uh, the, the Hexcoin project. And the reason that can happen is not only be because he's letting all these people participate and, and be incentivized for it as well. Um, it, it, it is um, the 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 the. The formula that he's using is just one proven to work data wise. We've seen, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. That's gotten products to billions of dollars, whether it be products like Amway, multi-level marketing products. Um, and his is not that per se, but it's using some of those elements. Right. And so it is very likely that people are going to try this, um, you know, if nothing but to just see, see what happens. And that's all it takes for it to go like dominoes. Now, at first, do I think that uh, it's going to take off really big? It, it could have some flash pumps in the beginning, but I think it might just reach this, this point where people really start to realize what they've been doing in cryptocurrency, that they have just been speculating and that 
there aren't enough users in cryptocurrencies. Like it's like two to three thousand people on a application is considered good, right? When uh, we got products uh, um, outside of crypto that do hundreds of millions of people a day, billions of people a day, um, you know, and, and some of the same applications they wish to build. Um, and and so just trying to drive home that that point of blockchain technology is going to be able to do all these things. Well, uh, I think and Richard Hart's philosophy and in my philosophy, what cryptocurrencies have broke down to be best at is store of value and possibly money or payment systems. Right. Um, <clears throat> and um, they, they seem to work better um in those ways, right? I know a lot of people want to build a lot of stuff, have business solutions, but it just isn't out yet. If that's going to really be uh, something that uh, is going to work, right? Um, so coupling all that together and just the, the idea, I think people are going to get to this place in cryptocurrency. I think they're going to see Bitcoin uh, as it goes up in value uh, it's like moving through quicksand, right? It gets, it gets, uh, or concrete, it gets harder and harder for the, uh, the value of Bitcoin to go any higher because it's all, the market cap is already so huge. Right. And so, uh, for what they've, they're in Bitcoin for, I don't think they're going to see the moves in Bitcoin value wise Bitcoin like they want to see. And so psychologically, I think that they're going to start to rely on projects like Hexcoin more and more. And we will see this, uh, Hexcoin, possibly be in the top 10 now if it gets in the top 10 uh remember bitconnect got in the top top 10 right <laughs> um the bitconnect comparison is not a good comp comparison but uh you know there have been some people who have said things like it feels scammy and i think that's what they're seeing but again we're talking about the dynamics here of what happens when you apply those certain principles but uh, this could this could become uh, a top 10 project very quickly and probably easily. I see no reason why it can't be. It's going to also depend a lot on how uh, Richard Hart and when people make a little bit of money, a lot of content of and they are going to make money. They're going to start to double up, triple up their money. And what are they going to do? They're going to push it harder and harder on social media, right? Um, and that's, I think what Richard Hart's expecting to happen. And I think all the blocks are laid for Hexcoin to go that way. I, I think it's going to bring excitement to cryptocurrency. Um, now with a lot of pros I've discussed about Hexcoin, you know, it's fair that I kind of put out, uh, the, the cons as well. And, and for me, it does go back to that use thing, right? And that's something I can't get around. A lot of people can't get around. And I understand Richard Hart's hands are tied in that, right? Because you got to be kind of careful uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, tokens and coins and projects that you don't fall under security. Um, because if you fall under security, then you're going to have to deal with a lot of people. If, you know, if this things don't work out with this project, uh, people start to want their money back. Uh, it's going to be based on what Richard Hart said to them, right? So it could be that Richard Hart does foresee some use for Hexcoin, but he doesn't want to go on record of saying it because then it looks like, it makes it look like he's giving out promises to people. Then he doesn't pass the how we test. And when he doesn't pass the how we test, now he's in legal, you know what? And, uh, right, you know, if something goes wrong, people start losing money. It, it ends up like one of these uh, uh, Ethereum contract games or or BitConnect or something crazy like that, then they can come after him. So he's trying to protect himself. Now, I obviously, I don't think uh, Richard Hart is a scammer. I think he has a lot of history in the cryptocurrency space where he's defended the space from scammers. Um, and I don't think it's that he then one day just became a scammer. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, there are some legal concerns for him that's going to, keep him out of that use case area uh, talking about a lot. And so what that does is that can scare off a lot of people. And, um, you know, basically what happens with that is that can reflect on the value and that, that could work against it. And, uh, it is still something I'm quite concerned about. I like use cases, 
for things. And, uh, uh, you know, this is obviously going to exploit store value, uh, what we've been speculating on. And, uh, you know, unlike gold, though, when, when gold uh, uh, pops, <laughs> you know, it can be used for different things. And uh, our cryptocurrency can. Um, but it's going to be interesting to watch. It's going to be very interesting to watch. I'm definitely going to get in and get some because I just believe that the, the price is going to possibly make it to the billions of dollars. Right. Um, why? Again, because of those interesting dynamics I discussed, human psychology. I can't pinpoint exact, you know, price. We don't have any charts to look at. We don't know exactly what Richard Hart is going to say or do after it because he, he's still going to reflect a lot on what happens with the price of Hexcoin, even though it's these contracts that are decentralized doing their own thing. But I, I think Richard understands the marketing aspect of uh, how to make these projects work. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to still be looking at him to see what happens with that. But um, this might very well be the last cryptocurrency project I could see pulling off uh, a big return. He's, uh, you know, I've seen figures like 10,000 10, 10, returns, uh, some crazy stuff out there. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to shill it, trying to make money off of their referral links. Uh, and they're going to make a lot of money. And I am too. <laughs> But Tara, uh, just want to, you know, give you the complete picture of this, uh, what's going to happen with this uh, project and what you need to look at and what we need to consider. So with that said, I'm just going to move real quick into Bitcoin NYK, not going to do a price prediction. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that there are certain, the two, the last two projects I discussed in this video, there are very much similarities between my project and these other two projects that uh, I believe have all the reasons to fall in really big market caps. Um, you know, we have a version of a Bitcoin fork. It's not really a fork, but uh, it does uh, basically distribute uh, tokens to Bitcoin holders free. Now, we're targeting something different, which is universal basic income, but 80 percent of the globe needs it. And what happens when... Um, most of the world's using your currency. It just automatically becomes a money. It's what happened with the euro and the U.S. dollar. Uh, it has a very aggressive uh, deflation uh, quality where 95% uh, of the tokens will be burned, uh, making it more deflationary in some ways than Bitcoin uh, on scale, just from it being able to do that. Um, right now, it's uh, used as a curation token on the Steam blockchain a lot. Uh, that steam block, the steam blockchain is pretty much known as a uh, uh, symbol for social media on the blockchain of cryptocurrency. And uh, it, when you really think about social media with cryptocurrency, right? Um, and you think about the fact that on Steam, the transactions are not only fast, not only is Steam one of the fastest blockchains out there. Their transactions are free. How can you be, if you're a money, just consider this, think about this. If you're a money, how can you beat fast or free? Now, some people would say because the Bitcoin NYK project is doing something similar to what Hex is doing, right? Hex started as Bitcoin Hex, then moved to just Hex. And they said, well, why are you doing anything with Bitcoin if you're on Ethereum, right? He's on the Ethereum blockchain. So on the Ethereum blockchain, because you can do things on the Ethereum blockchain that you can't do with Bitcoin, right? But with us, we're doing this Bitcoin thing, but why are, why are we on the Steam blockchain? Same thing, right? Fat, the, the speed of transactions and that they're free. Nothing can trump that. The problem with the Steam blockchain is that they haven't found a way to market and brand to people. Not only is it expensive, right? It's very expensive, but you have to have certain... Uh, uh, directions in play on what you want to be. And I think the Steam blockchain right now is so many different things to so many different people that it's hard to focus on one thing, whereas our focus is quite clear. Um, and because of that, uh, we can use the abilities of the Steam blockchain to not only uh, uh, distribute our UBI to 80% of the globe, uh, to do our curation through the blockchain, but also... Uh, basically bring Bitcoin holders to the Steam blockchain. And um, I won't say what our prediction is, but I will say this, 
that some of the figures I've thrown out in this video <laughs> and uh, some of the ideas uh, where you can see a project go based on those fundamentals, right? Because you got to have the fundamentals down first. Doesn't matter how great your technology is or what you're doing. If nobody's using it or understanding the direction you're going, it doesn't matter, right? But uh, um, yeah, based on that, uh, I think we're going to see some very impressive market caps with these projects. But that's all I want to say in this video. Uh, Hexcoin is going to be something interesting. We'll be out tomorrow. Um, Bitcoin NYK, look out for us. We're going to be doing a lot of great stuff coming up here in the future. Electronium, great project. So you want to definitely stay there with Electronium. But that's all I got to say in this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.